The Mystery of Credit Scores. In this module, I'll be talking about how credit scores are calculated and how your credit reports function. There are three different credit bureaus that each maintain different copies of your credit reports. Those are Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And when you try to apply for new credit, uh, you have a uh, credit inquiry or hard pool against one, two, or all three of these, depending on the lender and type of loan. Well, with mortgages and car loans, usually they're going to look at all three bureaus, plus extra info about your employment, income, and also how much you have saved. Uh, with credit cards, usually they'll look at just one or two, but some credit card issuers will pull from all three, such as Capital One. And for the consumer, it's better if only one or two is pulled from because then the third one isn't affected with your credit report because each credit inquiry stays on your report for two years and negatively affects your credit score for six to 12 months. Um, with your uh, credit score comes a lot of misconceptions. If you have a score from creditkarma.com or many other websites, that's not a FICO score. That's called a FACO score, which is obviously a derisive term. And that means it's just a number they make up without the actual FICO scoring model. It might not be related at all to your FICO score, or it might match your score. It depends. But you can't use it for uh, evidence of what your FICO score is. Now, FICO is an acronym for Fair Isaac and Company, and that's the company that introduced this scoring model in 1989, and it's used by all three bureaus, and it's used in so many contexts. The components of this score primarily are your payment history and utilization. So 35% of the score is based on your payment history, and having a better payment history would mean no missed payments, and the more payments you have on your history, the better. So if you have a lot of different credit cards, every month on each one of those cards, you're picking up a, a positive payment history for each payment. And so that means you could have eight cards, and every month you're getting eight uh, good payments on that part. Utiliz utilization. So that's how much of your credit lines you're using, and that varies quite a bit. It can vary from month to month. In fact, it could vary from day to day. But typically, they only report it once a month. So when your credit card issuer reports how much balance you have on your card, it's probably the same as your statement date. So it's possible that it's not going to match what you have right now. In fact, it almost always wouldn't match what you have right now. I'm not sure how that works for mortgages and, and car loans and student loans because there is no credit line. So there isn't any utilization per se. And I wasn't able to figure that out by searching, unfortunately. With uh, age of accounts, that makes up 15% of your score. And if you have older accounts, it's better. So it's an average. If you have one credit card for 10 years and you only had one card and then you get, let's say, two more, now your age just went down to three years and four months. So you want to have multiple credit cards for that reason. So if you get a new account, it's not going to ruin your average age. And there's no shortcut to um, building up your average age of accounts, typically. The mix of the types of credit you have is accounts for 10% of your score. Having just credit cards means you probably won't ever reach 830 or somewhere around there in your credit score. You're going to have to have other types, such as student loans, mortgages, or car loan as well. And the other part is 10% new credit. So if you have credit added recently, that reduces your score for a while. Uh, but it can also increase your score if your utilization goes down. So the credit score in the classic model, which is what's used most of the time, ranges from 300 to 850. And uh, 700 or above is good. Usually they call it good. 750 is very good. And above 800 is excellent. And you could have below that. It can vary quite a bit per month. Uh, and, and if you have like around like anywhere from 300 to 600, that probably means that, that you're a big risk because you defaulted before. You, you didn't pay your debt. You have 30, 60, or 90-day late payments. And you probably have other bills as well if you're at the lower end that you didn't pay. And that can include all kinds of unpaid bills such as um, 
hospital bills. And you can also dispute those bills with the uh, credit bureau. You have to do it with each one individually, and you can do it all from their website. And typically, they have to provide evidence that you actually owe that money, and they often can't do it, and then they'll remove it. So don't just think, oh, I can't do anything, because there are avenues you can take even if you do actually owe those bills. So when you look at this FICO model, what's missing? Well, there's no utility bills, no rent payments. Employment history and income isn't even considered in your FICO score. Uh, and your credit limits are um, considered for the purpose of utilization, but not for the overall score. And whether you pay your balance in full every month doesn't matter in relation to the score. Of course, if you have a high utiliza utilization, that hurts your score. But uh, usually if it's below about 30 or 40 percent, your score is going to be pretty good in that category. So you can get your credit report for free every year from annualcreditreport.com. And that's an official uh, government-sponsored website where you can go and get your credit report. But you won't get your score. And to get your score, you typically have to pay. Uh, you can pay on um, myfico.com is the official website where you would pay $20 a month to get a daily update of all three of your scores from each bureau. And you also can get your score whenever you're declined for credit because they'll send you a letter uh, telling you what your current score is and the adverse factors that led them to not issue you credit. Nowadays, you have a lot of credit card issuers offering the score for free. Discover, Citibank, Barclay Card, and American Express all do this. And they'll put the score on each of your monthly statements, and you can see how it changes month to month. And that score that's provided is just from one bureau. It's uh, often TransUnion. Um, with Discover, it's, it's TransUnion, at least in Florida. Um, so keep that in mind because your other credit reports might not match. That's why you should check all three of your reports, and you should make sure there's not any incorrect data. And that could come from identity theft, and it could also come from just general data entry mishaps. And you can actually check one report at a time. So if you wanted to, uh, you could pick up like your Experian report in June and then get your Equifax one in October and your TransUnion one in, in February. And then that would be uh, more up to date because you'd see it every few months instead of just once a year. So hard pulls is when, when you have a new credit inquiry and that hurts you for about um, six months to a year in relation to your credit score and it stays on your report for two years. And you could have more than one. Uh, you could obviously apply for a lot of different credit lines and then you have five hard pulls. But often people worry a lot about those and they're probably not that important unless you're going to going for a mortgage or car loan soon, in which case you don't want to apply for any credit cards for a few months or probably a, a six months if possible before going for that loan. So there is a new FICO model that came out last year, 2015, and it includes utility payments and the uh, stability of your address. And it's hypothesized that if you move around a lot, that means you're more of a credit risk. But that model isn't widely used yet and it's only used for people who don't have a FICO score. Uh, if you just pay your utility bills on time, you don't have a credit score unless you actually have credit cards or uh, other you know, mortgages, student loans or car loans. So you should definitely, if possible, get started early and, and get a credit card assuming you're going to use it responsibly so you can build up that credit history and that average age of account. Uh, and then that'll help you with getting car insurance at a lower rate, many employment applications and uh, applications to live in an apartment, look at your credit score. So it's very important to have a good credit score. Uh, if you have negative data on there, it'll hurt you for seven years and then it'll disappear. Uh, before um, seven years are up, you could possibly dispute it and that will help. Or if you negotiate it with the lender, uh, actually, that might hurt you a lot more than it help because then the date of the uh, negative information will be updated and it'll be seven years from when you actually paid it rather than seven years from the original date. So make sure you do a lot of searches online and read official websites about that to understand that better because you, you don't want to get cheated. And uh, typically, if you're already in default, paying the card issuers 
or whatever, whoever you owe your money to isn't going to help you with your credit score or your credit report all that much. Uh, you might be better off not even doing that and looking into bankruptcy or um, negotiating for a settlement where you have to pay like 50% of what's owed, not all of it. And then keep in mind that you owe income tax, of course, on the amount that the card issuer forgives.